Hey guys, welcome to Overdrive Motorsports. Today we're going to be taking apart a Rotax carburetor for cleaning. So we've got our tools laid out on the bench. We've got the carburetor here for disassembly. The first thing we're going to do is take apart the bowl nut with a 19 millimeter wrench. And that guy, you break loose and it spins off. Then I like to take off the choke which you take off with a flat head screwdriver. Once the screw is all the way loosened, you can pull the choke out by hand. And then we flip down, we'll take out the air screw and the fuel filter plug. Now on the fuel filters, um, the newer carburetors, come with just the plug and no filter inside, so keep that in mind. Here you can see the debris that's on the filter. There's some hair, there's some dirt all over there. And the air screw before taking apart, I like to count how many turns in it is. So half, one, half, two. Then we completely loosen it to extract it. Now that's all the way out. When you pull this out, be careful for a little spring dropping. So you always want to do this on a table, ideally a clean table with a towel. So that's the spring that fell out. Now we've got these two on the choke out we can take the float bowl off next. So the float bowl is a four millimeter Allen wrench. And the three screws, you just loosen a little bit and then these guys come all the way out. And here's the other two. Loosen that all the way out. Now this is always a job best done at the shop rather than at the track in case you lose anything or if there's any setups that uh, you want to modify or if you need to order some new parts. It's got the three screws out, float bowl is off. When you take off your float bowl, these floats are gonna come with it and you can see where it says Alto. That's the upside of the float. You wanna make sure they move freely and that they're not filled with fuel. So these two are in good shape, not filled with fuel. Now we've got the carburetor itself, old dirty brittle gasket. Then we'll pull out the main jet and when we pull out the main jet then we're going to measure the float height for our records. So we've got the main jet which we've loosened. And here you can see the jet has some scarring on it from the screwdriver. And I'd probably replace this jet before it goes back together. So the jet is out. We've got our caliper is set to zero to measure the float height. So our float height is 23.27, it's right in the good range. And then this way, this is also the float drop. So you can see the inlet needle here, how far it drops. That's how much fuel is let in when it's flowing fuel. And then you can see the tip of the float is going to line up with the pilot jet. All right, so here we take side cutters that we're gonna pull the float arm out with. Then we've got our inlet needle, which is a 150 size. That's a specified dimension. Pilot jet outer, and here is the choke jet. So the choke jet is how much fuel goes through 
when you've lifted the choke to start the engine. So that guy's out. Now we've got, this is called the Outer Pilot Jet. And this one is a 60, which is the only allowable size. And then the internal jet, you can see way down here, you want to get a screwdriver that fits down in that hole into the pilot jet. So this is the internal pilot jet. Now, if these jets feel overly tight when you're trying to take them out, specifically the internal pilot jet, please stop and bring your carburetor to a professional to have it removed, or you could cause severe damage. So this guy here, the dimension is very small on the numbers, but it's a 45. Okay. Now, the last two items that we have are the emulsion tube and then the inlet needle seat. So what we do is we take a nine millimeter socket, which we've machined the outside of and drilled out the inside to fit the emulsion tube. It goes all the way down. That guy, we break loose. Unscrews here. This one, the mandatory size, DP267. Now here, got the inlet needle, seat, which is also the same socket, nine millimeter. Comes out. And then you can see down there, there's a gasket. We'll use a pick to get that out. And the pick gets that gasket out. You definitely don't want to reassemble without gasket or with two gaskets. So that's the end of our disassembly video. We're going to go clean this carburetor and we'll show you the reassembly.